Good morning, brand DIYers. And you can tell by my lack of a watch that I didn't know that I was late. Actually, I did know I was late and I apologize for being late. Um, uh, I have got uh, a new thing today. Yesterday was a new thing where we had a brand DIY member actually giving a workshop. And today is another day of firsts. Today, I wanna do the first ever brand DIY book review. And this was inspired by, well, me looking over here at my bookshelf and going, there's a whole bunch of books that I use all the time. And I've mentioned a lot of them to you already. However, I thought it was time in the effort to help everybody take control of their brand to recommend some of the books that work for me and probably more important to everyone who is watching their budget because we're all bootstrapping books that you should avoid like the plague. So I am going to do this. I promise to do this every Wednesday. I'm going to do a book review until I run out of good books. And by then, I hope that some of you will share your favorite books with me. I can read them and review those as well. So that brings us back to the book of the day today. And that is this book. It is Hey Whipple, Squeeze This, a book by Luke Sullivan, famous copywriter, did a whole bunch of great stuff, did ads for jeans, did ads for Porsche, I believe. Um, in the 1980s and 1990s, he was the business. He was winning tons of awards. He was a god. When I was coming up in the ad world, I knew about Luke Sullivan. Very famous dude, still a famous dude. He's given up um, writing ads full time now. He teaches at an ad college. Uh, but that is just backstory. The real story here is, hey, Whipple, squeeze this. Now, this book, uh, the title, for those of you who are not of a certain golden vintage, uh, Mr. Whipple, look it up on YouTube. I will put a link in the show notes. Mr. Whipple was a famous icon in, I think, 1970s and 1980s advertising. And by famous, I do not mean beloved. Mr. Whipple would catch well-meaning housewives, and they were always housewives, uh, because that was days before mm, people recognized that other people stayed at home except housewives. So he would interrupt two housewives who were behaving like complete ninnies, and they were standing at the end of the toilet aisle, and they would be squeezing this paper, this toilet tissue, and going, oh, oh, and hugging it and loving it. And you're going, these people are nuts. Only somebody on Madison Avenue could have come up with something that stupid. Mr. Whipple would charge down the aisle, again, like a ninny, and say, ladies, please don't squeeze the Charmin. I have to sell this stuff. And that was the ad. And if you think it was bad the first time, it got worse. This ad campaign was so effective. It was, I believe, the number one ad campaign for 20 years in a row. They did hundreds of versions of Mr. Whipple. Mr. Whipple became a rock star like Mr. Clean or Tony the Tiger. And did it all despite creating, uh, being the star of ads that just made you wanna go jump out a window. They were that bad. Like I said, check the show notes for a sample of Mr. Whipple. So, hey Whipple, squeeze this. I think, think captured a sentiment that we all felt at the time. Uh, shitty ads shouldn't exist. And if they do exist, somebody has to speak out about it. And I think that was the inspiration behind this book. Uh, this book, focuses on advertising. It's a book about the ad game. And if you want an inside peek at the ad game, there is no book better. However, the real focus and the reason I'm recommending it here is because it is actually all about understanding consumers. Why did they buy Charmin when they had this horrible stereotype of, of women buying and shopping in a supermarket and this horrible ninny of a man, Mr. Whipple, ew. Why did they keep buying Charmin? And why do they keep repeating the ads and doing more and more and more of them? It's a question that Luke Sullivan explores in this book. Now, I love this book because it was written by somebody who, just like many people in the ad design, in the marketing game, 
he came into it with a ton of knowledge on how to craft a report, do a logo, or win an award for an outrageous ad, but didn't really have a clue of why they're doing what they're doing. So that is kind of the jumping off point for Luke Sullivan in this book. It is written for people like the 25 year old me who first bought this book, who came into it all wide eyed and bushy tail going, yay, I can go win awards. I can do outrageous work. I didn't have a clue about why I was doing what I was doing. And this book explained why you're actually doing what you're doing. Now, it starts with a chapter on why everyone hates advertising. And I'm going to read a snippet from that in a second. Remember I said it's uh, past the milk out your nose funny. I'm going to read you the very first paragraph of this book in a minute. And you're going to see why uh, this is so insanely funny and why it catches you right by the, the, the cojones and, and, and gets you into a place where, yeah, you hate ads. We hate ads too. So then he brings the counterpunch. Why is this the best business in the world to be in? I've been in this business for 30 years. I still wake up every day excited to be in this business because every day it changes and we get to be creative and we get to try to figure out humans, which is an especially tricky and frustrating and fun game to be in. So uh, he, what, what it comes down to is that building ads and doing design is commercial creativity coming up with cool ideas in the service of commerce. So yeah, we get to be zany, but there's also a real discipline that comes with having to make a buck off of your ideas. If you're zany and your ads don't make a buck, you're fired. So that is what gives this game such tension, makes it so fun to be in, and makes books like this such a great read. So right after he starts off with why people hate advertising, and why it's still the best business in the world to be in, he digs into the creative process. Now, for anybody who is outside of the game of advertising and design, the creative process can be a bit baffling. Uh, people sit around with their feet on the table, they go for walks, they drink wine, they fall asleep, and then like Don Draper, they have some Alka-Seltzer, wake up and come up with ideas, boom. It's not like being an accountant where you start at the top of a sheet and you work your way to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom, you go, well, that's the job done. It's about lateral thinking, coming up with a million ideas, as opposed to working your way through from the problem to the solution. And that is what he explains in Hey Whipple in, in the section on creativity and how to come up with ideas and how to trust yourself when you're coming up with ideas, even though you start at the top of the page you're not going to go to the bottom. You're going to go to another page and another page, and maybe you'll go to a billboard. Who knows where you'll end up, but tomorrow you'll have an answer on that page. He goes on to talk about how to write a creative brief. And for the majority of us brand DIYers who are going to be working with consultants or designers or, or website developers, writing a creative brief is probably the best skill that you can learn because what it does, it builds a fence around the creative process. And if anybody ever complains to you about having too many restrictions on their creativity, throw them out of the room. Creativity thrives on restrictions. In fact, if you give somebody no restrictions, they're just going to come up with meandering, stupid, surrealist ideas that go nowhere. Learn how to write a creative brief. Luke Sullivan shows you how. Uh, he then goes on to talk about brainstorming and how to keep it, like I just mentioned, how to keep it from wandering off into mindless idea generation. He talks about copywriting, talks about simplifying ideas and throwing ideas out. A critical part of the process, probably the most important part of the process, isn't coming up with ideas. It's throwing ideas away because they're not good enough. Getting ideas that people want to share virally storytelling, deadlines, digital communication, earned media, PR, and so on and so on and so on. Now, if you're like me, you're probably a sucker for leadership, how-to, and secret ingredient books. If you go on Amazon, you will find more than 200,000 titles just related to leadership. However, most of these books, and I've read a lot of them, are of zero service. 
what they do, they repackage dull ideas Peter Drucker came up with a long time ago, and they add snappy formulas and put little TMs on them and patent pendings. And you can be sure that the only person who's gonna get rich off of these books is the writer of the book. Hey Whipple is different. It is not a book like that. The copy I have right here is the fifth edition. I bought the first edition of this book and it has gone to the sands of time somewhere, probably left it in Hong Kong or Germany somewhere. Um, the copy that I first bought was the first edition and I bought it off of Luke Sullivan when he was speaking at, uh, I think the New York Ad Awards show in New York City when I was, I don't know what, 25 years old. So I was, I almost fell off my chair laughing when I read the first edition and you know what? I've got the fifth edition and I still fall off my chair and then sit back up, pay attention and write down the insights. Um, this book also, there are some books uh, that you buy when you're young and then you buy when you're older again. You go, oh, that's an excellent book. I remember all of these things. This book is not like that. Advertising and design and professional communication has evolved at a quantum pace since I got started in this business. The first book was this thick. The new book is this thick. And none of the stuff in the new book is wasted, blah, blah, blah. This reflects how much the business of professional communication has gone, has grown in the ensuing 20, 25 years since this book was first published. There are as many things for a 20 year old who is in art school to learn in this book as there are for a 65 year old who just retired and is starting a side hustle, uh, DIYing their own brand. This book has not been frozen in time. And now the final bit, I told you that it is a book that it is uh, past the milk out your nose funny. I wanna leave you with the very first paragraph of the book. We open on a tidy suburban kitchen. Actually, it's a room off to the side of the kitchen, one with a washer and dryer. On the floor is a basket full of laundry. The camera closes in. Out of the laundry pops the cutest little stuffed teddy bear you've ever seen. Anybody of a certain vintage will know where this is going. He is pink and fluffy. He has a happy little face and there's one stock stuck adorably and hanging over his left ear. And he says, hi, I'm Snuggles, the fabric softening bear. And I, the first bullet rips into Snuggles' stomach, blows out the back, in a blizzard of cotton entrails and punches a fist-sized hole in the dryer behind. <laughs> Snuggles grabs the side of the Rubbermaid laundry basket and sinks down, his plastic eyes rolling as he looks for the source of the gunfire. Taking cover behind 1 16th inch of flexible acrylic rubber, Snuggles looks out of the basket's plastic mesh and into the living room. He sees nothing, the dining room, nothing. Snuggles is easing over the backside of the basket when the second shot takes his head off at the neck. His body lands on top of the laundry, which is remarkably soft and fluffy, fade to black. That is the opening paragraph of Hey Whipple Squeeze This, and it talks about an icon of advertising, Snuggles the Fabric Softener Bear, who was every bit as annoying as Mr. Whipple was. I'm also going to put a Snuggles ad into the show notes so you can judge for yourself. At any rate, take my word for it. Five stars, pass the milk out your nose funny. Tons of stuff you can use as a brand DIYer. That is Hey Whipple, squeeze this. I hope you enjoyed the very, very first uh, book review on brand DIY.